Hey guys, it's Mel and this is the Millennial by Mel podcast. I have many mottos in life, many of you know, never refuse a free drink, but one of them talks about people coming into our lives as blessings or as lessons, and some are both, but I think that we have a great opportunity to look at this shutdown uh, because of the coronavirus and what's happening with our careers and our professions, and that's affecting our, our finances, our families, our stress levels, everything that's going on in our lives right now. As a lesson, obviously, we're all under a lot of stress uh, as, as any profession, business owners or not, we're all going through the same thing right now. I'm really excited to share a success story and send some positivity your way during the shutdown. Cheers. Cheers. We are working on this Shut down, uh, drinking, social distancing thing, not so much, but... Not so much social distancing part, yeah. Enjoying the drinking part, right? So I thought this was a great opportunity while we are home to introduce my significant other, Alex, Dr. Alex Shope. And I had uh, done a podcast with Jason Clock about him starting his success young in his business. And I talked about t- uh, podcasting with somebody, <laughs> him, uh, that had changed their careers and their success started later in life. Hmm. And I yeah, thought this was a, a little bit later in life. A little bit right? later, Just right? Just a little bit. <laughs> but I think you're close to the same age as Jason. But, uh, hmm. you know, we're at a time right now that people are going to be considering changing their careers. Oh, absolutely. Uh, their futures, their finances, things. Um, there, there's a lot of people who are out of work right now, mm-hmm. and I thought it would be a great time to share your story in how you changed paths yeah. um, for those that might be changing paths too mm-hmm. right now, and then um, what you're doing for millennials in the corona. And oh, absolutely. I think it. Uh, I think it really makes sense, especially with what you're. It's perfect timing. Oh, I it's think. very perfect timing, yeah. especially with this. Uh, with this, and we you can know, have some wine. Uh, corona virus <laughs> going on, going around. I'm gonna keep drinking while not, he's not, talking. Not transmitted by this, just so you know. Different corona, but uh, yeah, um, I'm 30 years old, and I spent my entire 20s in school pursuing one career. Quite literally, I was uh, med school, by the way. Oh yes, med school, I guess I should have mentioned that. I was studying to be an orthopedic surgeon. That's what I had my mind and heart set on for, yeah, I guess uh, 10 years or so at least, you know, the entire way through my undergraduate career, entire way through medical school. Um, You know, I got to the end of that and was doing a research fellowship down in Philadelphia at the Rothman Institute, it's big orthopedic practice, but I started to have some doubts about it and, you know, I applied for my match, I didn't match and really came around. It was okay. Oh, it's completely okay. Frankly, I'm happy with that. I mean, we talked about blessings and lessons, right? One of my life mottos. Mm -hmm. So I've told you that for a long time that, you know, everything happens for a reason and, Mm -hmm. and again, we're here to talk about where you are now. Uh, So. No, uh, I'm in a great place now. You know, I, you know, I didn't match, but it was kind of a blessing in disguise for me because, you know, I got out of that, decided I wasn't going to continue to pursue clinical medicine. And I actually got into entrepreneurship now. I, you know, I'm on the business side of things now and couldn't be happier. So. Well, and obviously as a business owner myself, I can appreciate that. But, uh, you told me too, that you had done some things at uh, at the med center. Oh, yeah, while well, I was there. Yeah. So it's funny that it kind of comes f- full circle mm-hmm. uh, that uh, we've, we've talked about some things about that, you know, maybe there were um, some signs back signs, then. Signs, silver line. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the, what the terminology yeah. is that you were interested in things uh, as well, far as the business. I was always interested in, uh, in just the business aspect of uh, medicine and healthcare in general. Um, 
for most of you who probably don't know this, that's not something that you ever get taught in medical school. Right. So if you don't ever take business classes or any type of economics ever, you know, you don't learn this right. stuff. Just like as a graphic designer in art school, we weren't taught <laughs> business either. Uh, and somebody like me who decided to start their own business, I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, mm. I still say I don't. But uh, while I was in medical school, um, you know, I, I knew I was interested in that. And um, two of my uh, classmates and I like felt that there was a void in our education. We we're being asked to uh, comment and like understand new health regulations and all, but you know, we had no education on this stuff. They were just kind of assuming it. So uh, we started this uh, student-led organization that did you know business lectures. Essentially, it was uh, outside of class. It was completely voluntary. But uh, between that and we were helping to promote this newly founded uh, MD MBA program. It's a joint degree program where you can get both your MD and MBA, you know, at the same time that's over awesome. a course of like, I think it was five years, but yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's started. You would have done that then. if that had been an opportunity for you then. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. If no, you had I... been interested. But... Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't choose the, the, the path that you thought that you were going to, but very what, much not. But no. what happened since and what are you doing now? Well, yeah, I mean, since then, since not matching, I mean, I literally had it in my head. I was like, okay, if I don't match, then I'm going to pursue these uh, other things. Um, I'm actually the uh, chief medical officer of two uh, medical uh, technology startup companies. Uh, one of them based here out of uh, our hometown in Hershey. It's called uh, Ionics. I thought you were going to say services. Hershey was the sweetest. It's called the sweetest place on earth. <laughs> well, it is, but... No, I know. Didn't want to give them too much press in the you yeah. know, in, in the podcast, but yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, the one is called uh, Ionics Antimicrobial Service Technologies. Uh, we make actually here I have one in front of me uh, with all the Corona stuff going around. We're uh, using this. It's this little adhesive mat that runs off of a watch battery. We have one over here uh, that when we come in the house, we put our hands on and all of our things that we uh, walk in the door with, it is cell phone our keys. personal decontamination state. This is centered around um, preventing the uh, spread of you know pathogens like bacteria, viruses, and uh, given what's going on with the uh, you know coronavirus pandemic right now, we actually just installed this at a couple places in the area. Um, Country Meadows uh, Nursing Home has these uh, installed right now, trying to put a barrier up and help people uh, stay safe. Yeah, so this is all circling back to uh, millennials like mm -hmm. Alex, who are doing some really amazing things during this time, during the shutdown and the coronavirus and helping to uh, avoid the spread of this. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all the bad rap, like I said, we were getting uh, in some of the social media articles this is uh, a key point in some of the positivity. So this is amazing. And we love it here and at some of our local places that they're installing it to uh, that you'll you'll hear about soon. Oh yeah, definitely. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, we've had many conversations about the stress and the frustration in in, you know, refocusing and changing what you want to be what you want to do uh, I think it was also quality of life oh absolutely. You know? and I think yeah. that it can relate to a lot of people going through this time right now with the shutdown mm -hmm. and focusing on what is going to be best for you and mm -hmm. your family and uh, your relationship and your future, uh, and that was really things that I wanted to stress in the in the podcast. Well, there's podcast. a lot, yeah. No, there's there, there's a lot of things that go into any sort of you know change in career, change in uh, change in anybody's life with anything. I mean, it's a very hard thing, especially you know once you've gone down a path for so so long and been focused on one thing. It you know it takes a lot, but there's a lot of considerations that went into it. One part of mine was you know a little bit of quality of life and what I wanted and you know yeah. um, I actually I work with my father at both of these companies that I work in and that was really important to me I'm um, getting to spend this type of time and you know learning from and with him and all and um, it was you know had a large impact on my decision making I think yeah. too but um, well and what you would be doing for the next 
five years at least, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in that profession, I think, uh, sacrifice, it's, it, you know, the sacrifice oh, that you yeah. can make. No, and, and, you know, everybody makes sacrifices for, you know, different things. You know, some of us, uh, you know, have to, you know, work long hours at long jobs. Some of us have to spend that much time in training in order to do the job that we wanted. Uh, the way I always looked at it and think that, you know, my, you've heard my father say this way more often than me, but, you know, uh, one of my family friends growing up was a cardiac uh, surgeon, he spent his life doing heart surgery and all. He's a brilliant guy. He's actually a really funny dude too, but um, he eventually got out of clinical medicine and moved into the business side of things. And he actually worked for uh, Johnson & Johnson and uh, worked at bringing new technologies um, back into the field. And what he always said was, you know, I could operate and see people in clinics and, you know, help a thousand people a day or a thousand people a year, sorry. But mm -hmm. um, if That'd I bring- That'd be a lot of people a day. You know, <laughs> that would be pretty aggressive, but- uh, you know. It would be great, but- uh, I wish I could help a thousand people a day. I, That'd be awesome, yeah. but- Hey, year, well, with year. his new business, the new business, he, he might be. But... Well, and, and that's exactly the point because, but, you yes. know, you could affect, you know, those a thousand or whatever the number is per year. It's, you know, it's limited. But if you help bring a technology, a test, a device to the market, you change millions of lives. Yeah. Like it affects so many more people. Your reach is larger. And that's always affected me and kind of helped me with especially yeah. this decision. Well, and I think that I think that it's really key too that I've I've told you, and I think this is so important, and I've noticed with my life and my career and my relationships and friendships is that, you know, we're here for a reason. What brought us here? We wouldn't be here if we didn't have those experiences and we didn't have those blessings and those lessons and those things that brought us here and. You know, even in in the time that that I've known you and that we've talked, that not just um, Jim that said that to you, mm. but your you know, but Dr. Parvizi and somebody who's mm. a world renowned surgeon, right, uh, said the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, if he could yeah. go yeah. back and he's he's helped and saved and fixed so many lives, but he just said it, it in that opportunity. You know, when you asked him. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have this route and I have this route. Um, you know, and you were conflicted because I think mm -hmm. your heart, your 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 history, your path, your schooling goes one way, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and we all are in that path of 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 what we think we want to do and what we're in our mm -hmm. degree is in and in college and even people mm -hmm. after graduation aren't doing what they did, but you were still on that path mm -hmm. and you asked advice and said, look, like if I match, if I don't, if I do this, if I don't. And for somebody in that position also to say, man, well, yeah. to have that opportunity well, in he, front of you. Yeah, he absolutely yeah, supported that. And he, he told me, he just said, you know, you have this amazing opportunity in front of you. And um, with both of these companies you're going to go work for now and he's like, you know, if if I was in your shoes I would do yeah. what you're doing. And I think that that's that's huge for it you. It, uh, it, it made my decision easier to have yeah. somebody that's like that's been a mentor yeah. to me and, to say that. Yeah, and you were on that path too, you know, for for reasons you know, we we, we all choose to go to school for something or uh, you know, for things, but I think along the way we develop uh, new interests and, and changes in that and well we all grow and develop and like you know we things change I mean when you're young and you're trying to decide what you want to be I mean how many of us at one point wanted to be you know uh, I wanted to be a paleontologist at one point because I like Jurassic Park and wanted to uncover dinosaur bones that's not what <laughs> I ended up wanting to do but hey Hey, you know, you know I, I was in fifth grade, Mrs. McIntyre, and my, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was, I had a art pal, I had a painter's palette with a paintbrush. I wanted to be an artist. And you know what? I wasn't a painting artist, but I was a graphic artist and it was close, you know, but. Mine um, wasn't, mine wasn't close at all. Yeah. I'm very far away from And that's from okay. The, and this, that's what this, that's what this podcast is all about mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm really excited that you're the the, the best person to to uh, be the specimen for <laughs> uh, 
for this, but. Change and stuff is, it, it's scary. It really, it is. And I think everybody, you know, feels that whether they openly admit that or talk about it. I mean, it is scary. The unknown is scary. And, uh, you know, deviating from a path and making a change, it's hard. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. I think that it'd be great for our millennials to uh, to hear what you're doing in, in the good ways of um, shedding some light on the positivity of, of testing for it, uh, preventing it, and some other, you know, other diseases detecting it. So, mm. um, so let, let's have it. Oh, let's have it. She's, she wants me to nerd out is what she's telling all you guys, but I'm going to keep Nerds it. Nerds out all the time. Yeah, she falls Star asleep. Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Who doesn't like that? I do like Star Wars, though. Mm. Power uh, Rangers. There's a red well, one the, up there. There is one right there, so hey. I, I don't dress up as one anymore, though, just so I you know. Thank but, you, goodness. <laughs> um, so both my companies actually, interestingly enough, are involved with this uh, coronavirus pandemic that we're experiencing right now. Um, the one, the Ionics technology, which is this uh, surface technology, can actually help prevent the spread of it by you know just putting it in place. It's uh, kind of a cool uh, silver copper based technology it can you know be put almost anywhere. Uh, the other uh, company that I work for is called uh, Contamination Source Identification, which is a big CSI. Oh, like she's took it from me. CSI. Uh, yes. Sorry. CSI. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yes, CSI. Is that the? Is that the? Dun, that's dun, not dun. the actual no, tone for it. That's a lot is, harder. But, but yeah. either way, though, we love all the crime shows, and mm. my sister loves them, so <laughs> we love them. Uh, CSI <laughs> is actually a very uh, like uh, it's another new company. It's only a year and a half old now. Um, it is based on detecting infections using uh, bacterial and well, actually pathogen and in general um, genetic sequencing uh, so think ancestry DNA or 23 and me mm -hmm. but for what's making you sick so we can actually uh, take somebody's you know blood or urine or you know any other type of sample and uh, analyze it with our test system and in 24 hours we'll tell you what's making you sick right now we're actually just uh, rolling out our uh, uh, coronavirus testing system right. the FDA you know uh, had all these issues uh, coming out that saying, "Hey, you can, you can, you can test for this." We have our CLIA certification, right. and you know, uh, starting next week, we're actually going to start accepting right. samples, which is amazing, mm. especially for Central Pennsylvania. You yeah. guys are really focusing on uh, Pennsylvania. Well, yeah, actually, we're only focusing on Central Pennsylvania right. for the coronavirus because there's such a need for you know uh, rapid testing, and right now. It, getting access to tests is very hard for hospitals right. and for and it's offices. like a seven day turnaround yeah at least you know yeah. it's just everybody's overwhelmed with it so we're really trying to focus on serving the central pennsylvania area and helping you know all of us around here and uh getting people answers faster right and uh up until now with the mm -hmm. coronavirus you guys were focusing on lyme disease yeah it's it's a terrible terrible well it's a terrible disease that when it's not detected initially it becomes, you know, uh, chronic or it becomes latent and it just, it, you know, it cripples people in the long term. And there are so many people affected by it. And frankly, there's no good way to test for it. And that's uh, we're really where we were focusing because our uh, CSI DX, the name of the test, mm -hmm. um, is actually uh, going to be, a, <laughs> it's going to be available uh, here uh, in the next month or so. And it's just a, it's just a little urine test where you can uh, pee in a cup essentially we run it down our pipeline, we can uh, tell you what's there in regards to uh, tick-borne uh, associated illnesses, one of those being Lyme disease. But yes. see all the co-infections, everything, and it's uh, it's a really big thing that we're really excited about. Right, so both great things that are happening uh, in the healthcare field, mm -hmm. especially right now with Corona. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, it's a great time to for people again like i said to reevaluate your situation and know that change is okay you mm -hmm. know making some changes in your career and um you know a lot of us are you know as a small business owner i'm i'm struggling uh we're all struggling and uh you know e even you guys are having 
you know, having some issues, I think right now during this time, mm. your business is, it is essential in a sense, but yeah. all of a sudden um, became very essential, very essential this, but yes. this thing right here is going to help also, um, bring some things to, to our area and especially up, you know, the labs up in Huntington at Junietta college mm. and, and you're, you're increasing some jobs there. So I think that there's some really great positive things that are going on. Uh, so many people that are coming together at this time and we, we don't want to overlook the, the businesses and the people who are bringing great positive, uh, you know, feedback and, and things mm -hmm. to our area. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Really affecting change and trying to yeah. like help things. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's, it's really funny. We were just having the conversation that up until up until this virus your business it you know i mean there were there were things going on with lyme disease mm -hmm. there were um you know trying to get into hospitals but you're in a position now that you didn't think you you, you didn't know the future uh when mm -hmm. you changed your path and no. your careers and look at what happened in the last couple weeks in the last couple of days mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know things a lot, can change a lot has happened. yeah <laughs> A lot Things has happened. Can change, yeah. So, um, yeah, and you just have to not be afraid of that change. I mean, it will be a little bit scary, but you have to learn. To well, what do they so. say? One of my other life mottos. Go I don't ahead. know all for life mottos. Sorry, but I just remember the drink one. Oh, that's the one you like no, to use the best. The greatest things in life are on the other side of our fear, right? Will Smith said that, and then he jumped out of a a plane. Mm. But it's true, you know. You gotta. Once you get past that fear, uh, it's gone. Yeah. So no, it's very true. Uh, I, I I know I've made some changes too, but uh, but yeah. So I'm I'm excited that we were millennia yelling about some really great things and mm -hmm. shouting out about you and what you're doing. And um, I think that there'll be some great topics that we'll have. Uh, if anybody has any questions or is is you know, somebody that wants to get involved, what, you know, what you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, definitely send, send information. We'll, we'll put the, uh, the websites and your contact information there that mm -hmm. people can get in touch with, uh, at this time. But I, I think it's time before we end this podcast mm. for another millennial slang. Mm -hmm. Boy. So as you know, the language of millennials, uh, I said that I was going to open this randomly and flip it open and share a word, a slang word. So I'm going to let Alex do it. I get this honor today. And hopefully he doesn't pick the one from the last podcast that I already checked off with my marker, but, um, but we'll read it and maybe it'll bring a comment or a, um, uh, which one are you going to pick? Oh, there's two. So let's see which one he picks. Oh, there's two. I think we'll go with this one. I can't one. wink, but if I could. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows. Gucci. Oh, do it. Yeah. Definition. <laughs> it is not the Italian fashion company. Gucci in slang means good, fine, or okay. Oh, it's Gucci. We know this, right? It's Gucci. So I've heard this again. Uh, some of you haven't, but definitely Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> Uh, all right. So thanks for Melanie yelling with us. And, uh, it was definitely Gucci, uh, for me <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully you can use that term. Um, was it good, fine or okay for you? It was Gucci. It was Gucci. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks guys. Melanie yelling soon. See ya.